Howdy, virgins and weeaboos, and happy holidays from everyone here at Hebrew Mountain in glorious Hyrule. It's really cold here. <gasps> Last Christmas, I gave you my heart, Georgie, and the very next day, I bit off your heart. That was Pennywise singing Last Christmas by Wham. You're welcome. Sorry. Um, anyways, today I wanted to talk about movies, and uh, more specifically, movies that I feel are just criminally underrated. So these are going to be movies that maybe just didn't do so well in the box office, or were not rated highly, or just not a lot of people know about, that I feel are genuinely really good movies. But before we get into it, guys, I want to give a quick thanks to the sponsor of this video, Manscaped. So Manscaped is a real neat company that specializes in taking all of the terror out of shaving sensitive areas. I don't know about you, but I've definitely definitely cut myself when shaving my nuggets, and let me tell you what, that is no fun for anyone. But with the patented lawnmower electric shaver, you won't nick or scrape yourself no matter how dang hard you try. Best of all is that it's waterproof and USB rechargeable, so you can even do your thing in the shower. Not to mention, it's also just one of the quietest electric shaving razors ever. Listen to this. I'm just jokes. Imagine if a shaver actually sounded like that. And I'm not just sponsored by these guys, I actually genuinely use their products. I mean, obviously you guys can't see this right now, but my balls are incredibly soft. <laughs> and they make a great line of body washes and ball deodorants? What? I didn't even know that was a thing, but yes, ball deodorants. Because no one wants to smell your musty, grungy nuts, my dog. So whether you do it for yourself or as a gift for someone with incredibly smelly nuts, support the channel, check out manscaped.com and get 20% off your order, free shipping, and two free gifts when you use promo code CAPTAINDESS. And I know that you're probably wondering if at any point during this video I'm going to be standing up. The answer is no. You know, I wish I had a, a good excuse. I think I just really wanted to sit down and I just wanted to hang out with you guys. I don't know. Is that a f***ing problem? Are we going to have a problem here? So starting off on the list, number 10, The Mummy Returns. Haha! <laughs> gotcha, you thought I was gonna say just the normal mummy. No, I'm talking 2001 Mummy Returns, the sequel. Which in many cases, and don't you dare leave a comment about this, was better than the first movie. Ah, I can feel the comments, they ah. Okay, hear, hear, hear me out. I, I love the original Mummy. Uh, and not, I'm not talking about like the 1937 or whenever the hell that came out, Mummy. I'm talking my man, Brendan Fraser, when he was just looking like a fucking snack 24 seven instead of a, a balding old man. I shouldn't be making fun because uh, he had a really rough life and I love the guy to death, but seeing as how I am also a balding man, I'm allowed to make fun of other balding men. So. Uh, Brandon, you're still number one in our hearts. Love you, bud. So fun fact about my first time watching The Mummy, I don't know exactly when it was, but I remember I had waited forever to watch it because I was really scared that I'd be scared of the movie. When you hear a movie called The Mummy, you expect it's gonna like f***ing terrify you to your core. I expected this movie to actually cause a tsunami of shit in my pants. And what I got was, yeah, there's some scary stuff in it. I mean, it's, it's not totally family friendly, but such a great action movie, such a fantastic adventure story, a lot of really talented talented actors in it. But we're not here to talk about The Mummy, okay? We're here to talk about The Mummy Returns. I love this movie like it was my own firstborn child because we all hate our secondborn child. Get out of here, no one likes you. I have a solid case as to why this movie is so fucking good, okay? Let's look at the pros of The Mummy Returns. The animation in the beginning, great. The storytelling, absolutely great. Humor, great. Action scenes, music, great. There was absolutely nothing wrong with this movie at all until the very like last 10 minutes. Now if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. A terribly animated Dwayne The Rock Johnson on a scorpion body. <laughs> and you know what? I will admit, it doesn't look that good, okay? I'm fully aware. It hasn't aged well, okay? But I think something else to take away from The Mummy Returns and why it's such a great movie is that this is the movie that started Dwayne The Rock Johnson's f***ing movie career. Without The Mummy Returns, he wouldn't be this massive successful dude that we know him as. And that's just really cool. Like, this also spawned the, uh, the Scorpion King movie that came after this. Another great underrated movie. It's not, like, on this list immediately, but it's a f***ing great movie. I personally am a huge fan of the way that they tweezed The Rock's eyebrows. Those babies could, could stab a person. Let's take a moment to appreciate the, um, the perfectly plucked eyebrows. Just for a second. Okay. <laughs> I want to say I rewatch The Mummy Returns at least like once a year, if if not more than that. It's just really good. 
<laughs> that's all. That's all I'm gonna say. That's I'm gonna end it right there. I'm just gonna say, really great movie, and you're dumb if you don't like it. Number nine, Equilibrium. So this is a 2002 movie starring Christian Bale and Sean Bean, and uh, me saying that it stars Sean Bean. You know what f***ing happens in this movie. I don't need to tell you. <laughs> I think he's in the movie for literally like less than five minutes. So I'm really not spoiling that much. I'm having a hard time even like coming up with what this f***ing movie's about because it's seriously one of the craziest experiences you'll ever see. All right, so let me just try to boil it down. There was a war, a, a third world war, and after that third world war, the remaining humans band together and realized that they couldn't ever endure another world war. So what they decided to do was to try to eradicate the source of what war comes from. And the source, according to the last remaining humans, is human emotion itself. So what they try to do is create a drug that gets rid of all human emotion and everyone is forced to take it. And so as you can imagine, there are people within the society that don't take this drug and they are what is called sense offenders. And this could be anything from they read books, they listen to music, they enjoy paintings because in this future, none of that is allowed anymore because it invokes emotion. So what's really cool about this movie, in addition to just all of the incredible choreographed fight scenes and all of that stuff, is honestly, before this movie, I wasn't super a fan of Christian Bale. He's definitely a good actor, I'm not gonna dispute that. But after seeing him in Equilibrium, it was by far, in my opinion, one of the best performances I've seen of Christian Bale in my f***ing life. Uh, basically, his character is one of the people that polices all of the sense offenders to make sure that that doesn't happen. And along the way, he stops taking his dose to stop his feeling of emotion. And it's basically witnessing someone's first time as they're experiencing what makes a person feel emotion. There's a scene in the middle of the movie where he listens to Beethoven for the first time. It's the first music this guy has ever heard in his life. And he just bursts down into tears. And it is such a fucking powerful scene. I love, love, love that scene. In one of the scenes after that, they find a bunch of animals that are uh, obviously pets of the people who are committing sense offense. And Christian Bale's character is, is forced to basically kill these animals, but he can't bring himself to do it because he, as he's feeling, he's understanding why pets are important. It's a really, it's kind of weird now that I put it that way, but it's like, you really have to see the scene to understand why it's so powerful. But mother I've seen Equilibrium like 20 plus times. That's not a joke, it's not an exaggeration. I rewatch a lot of stuff. Even on the title or on the cover of Equilibrium said like, the Matrix is jack to this movie by some random person who maybe reviewed this movie at some point. Definitely not the director's son or something like that. Which on that note, like they're, they're two separate movies. You can't compare Equilibrium and The Matrix together as like, ooh, this one's better than the other one. It just, no, no. Number eight, Hackers. Let me just ask you real quick. What do you think about Angelina Jolie? Do you look at this thing and you say, damn girl, I wanna get in that. You look at her as Maleficent and you just immediately spread your leg. For me, I just, I never really liked Angelina Jolie. Like I never thought that she was like super talented or even that pretty, but then I watched Hackers and I was like, never mind. <laughs> Cause holy good God. Now I don't want anyone to leave a comment and say, that's three, you're objectifying a woman. Stop it. Because I am appreciating her talent as well as her boobies. Okay guys, there's a difference. But I cannot stress enough how much this movie is just the quintessential 90s movie. If you want to know what the 90s were like, watch Hackers. <laughs> There's motherfuckers on rollerblades. There's video game arcades with rollerblading allowed in it. There's a whole gang of rollerbladers. Look at these graphics. Like, what, what am I floating in right now? Apparently this is what hackers thought hacking looked like back in the 90s. <laughs> what is this? This is not it. It has Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Is that a joke? You're, you're not gonna watch this movie? You're sitting there looking at me and being like, God, Destry, you're so stupid. Yeah, well, I'd like you to make a top 10 underrated movies list while sitting down on a green screen holding a fucking microphone that's not even plugged in. Yeah, why don't, why don't you do that? I tried to show this movie to one of my close personal friends thinking that he would enjoy it. 
and he walked out, I want to say 30 minutes in, and he was like high as a kite. So I don't know what mind state you have to be in to enjoy this movie, but I love it. I really, I love Hackers. It's it's a great movie. Number seven, The Chronicles of Riddick. So this is a sci-fi uh, fantasy movie that came out in 2004, starring Vin Diesel, as he plays a character named Riddick, who is a mass murderer slash ultimate badass, whose muscles are always glistening with oil for some reason. So I think a lot of the reason of why I like uh, the Chronicles of Riddick personally is that it was one of the only DVDs that I had when I was growing up So just imagine like 16 year old me and I'm just really sad wearing tiny skinny jeans Constantly wearing eyeliner getting made fun of and I could come home and the security of knowing that the Chronicles of Riddick was waiting there for me, man. <laughs> I know, it's, it sounds really f***ing sad, but that's probably because it was. And with this one, I kind of can understand why people didn't like it, because it kind of feels at points like edgy, like intentionally edgy. Which if you've seen Suicide Squad, you'll know exactly what that is. I am not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you really, really bad. <laughs> I really cling on to movies that are super fantasy based and don't really take place in our universe just because like who wants to live in this universe? This place sucks! And, and one of the things that really stand out with this movie is that the CGI is really f***ing good. They basically employed a lot of different techniques to CGI in this movie that had never been done before. And, and that's just, that's just really cool, you know? And this just might be a me thing, but whenever I'm watching like a really cool action movie, there's always like one part in particular that, that like makes me go, huh! And so the one part in the Chronicles of Riddick that just makes me, you know, like tense up and I'm like, Whoa! is there's this part where he's escaping with like some other prisoners because he's in a jail and they have to make it to the other side of this planet because when the sun hits the planet it's so hot that it just boils and burns anything that it comes in contact with so they have to basically beat the sun to the other side of the planet and it's really intense and there's a part at that part where and Riddick just kills like 30 plus people and 16 year old Destry is just having a mini orgasm over here he's like Whoa! if you're a fan of Vin Diesel talking in a very very low voice uh, almost to the point where you can't understand what he's saying what? I'll say we won't be back. Or you just like otherworldly, kind of really cool sci-fi fantasy adventures. This is definitely a movie for you, and I couldn't recommend it more. Also, it should be worth mentioning that this is actually a sequel to the movie Pitch Black, which is sort of more of a horror take on uh, The Chronicles of Riddick, but it still is a really cool movie. Definitely recommend that one as well. Number six, Wild Wild West. This one actually baffles me. I'm not kidding when I say I do not understand how this movie is rated so low across the internet. 4.9 on IMDb by all of the users who have reviewed it, a 38 on Metacritic, and a 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. A 17! What the hell? I'm still mad about it. First off, who the f rated this movie so low? I will find you and I will snap your bones in two. Every one of your bones, like say goodbye to them because you won't have them anymore. By the way, YouTube, I know that you have a new harassment policy and you don't like that when I say that, but this wasn't a threat. This a f***ing promise, bitch. Let me paint a picture, okay, of what Wild Wild West is about. It features Will Smith and Kevin Klein as they are two opposite ends of the spectrum of heroism as they must save their country from a dastardly man who's a little bit racist and is definitely crippled. Does that sound awesome or what? Everyone's like, no. Destro, I see why they gave this a 17%. That, that sounds terrible. Okay, well let me fill you in on some more stuff about the movie. It's a western but it features steampunk looking ass mechanisms and some of the most awesome animation for a movie in 1999 that I've ever seen. How the fuck did they make this spider look so good? This thing is crazy. I don't know if you guys have seen fellow YouTuber Will Smith in any huge movies, but he's great. Wild Wild West is a movie that you could just put on in any situation and it's a good movie to watch. If you want something to fall asleep to, great movie to fall asleep to. If you want something to impress your little nephews as they're coming over, and you're, you don't know what the hell to do because they're in Fortnite and you, you don't want to play Fortnite. Like, are you kidding me? So you whip out Wild Wild West and here they are enjoying having the time of their life because they're kids and they're not going to rate something a 17%. God damn it! That is a man's head. What I want you guys to do, if, if you haven't seen Wild Wild West, is go and watch it 
Tell me genuinely what you thought about it, okay? Like, it's totally okay if you hate it, but just know if you do, uh, we are not friends and I will never speak to you. You know what, I'm actually going to look at some of the reviews and why they rated this movie so low and just see why people have such a problem with it. Okay, one out of 10. For me, I cannot suspend disbelief to the point of seeing stuff that's impossible to be built with today's technologies being built like they were nothing in 1869. That's because no one has wanted to build a giant spider, you f***ing idiot. Bruh, haven't you ever heard of f***ing science fiction? Oh my god. I just, I cannot. I, it's not believable. The uh, technology does not exist. Can't make a spider. You can't make, can't, can't make a spider do a walk, okay? <laughs> here's, here's another one. Hideously awful. As a fan of the original TV. Okay, that that's, that's the f***ing one criticism that I've seen that maybe I could excuse is that apparently Wild Wild West was an original TV show and then it was rebooted into this movie that had nothing to do with what the f***ing original thing. How many times do we see that nowadays and it takes it in a totally different direction and it's actually awesome? This is one of those things where Wild Wild West, probably the original show, was great, but I got f***ing news for you. So is the movie, dipsh**. It's the worst movie I've ever seen. If you're gonna make a movie based on much loved TV show, another person, another person that rated it low because of the TV TV show. I'm gonna f***ing cream pie in someone's oatmeal. Wild Wild West? More like wild wild waste of time. Oh! I can't read any more of these because I will probably have an aneurysm, but you get the picture. I think if you liked the original TV show, maybe watching this wasn't a good idea. But if you were a kid growing up in the 90s, this movie tickled you in places that if an adult tickled you in those places, you would have mental scarring. <laughs> What? Moving on, number five, the butterfly effect. So this one might actually surprise a lot of you guys because I feel like a lot of people have actually seen the butterfly effect and actually really did genuinely enjoyed it. But the anomaly with the butterfly effect is that it's rating on both IMDb, Metacritic, and Rotten Tomatoes is atrocious. And I don't know why? So what I can say about the butterfly effect without giving too much away is basically it's about this kid named Evan who is able to go back in time uh, based on events that he's written about in his uh, journal and change the past and then go forward back into the future and see how those events have changed based on his choices. So as he finds out throughout the movie, some of the choices that he makes while he has great intentions in doing them can often have a very adverse effect that he didn't think about uh, that would happen down the road. And man, just thinking about all of the super powerful scenes that are in this movie, like, holy Christ. And this is kind of a surprise, seeing as how I really don't like Ashton Kutcher in a lot of things, but Ashton Kutcher knocked it out of the park in this sh Like, congratulations, man, this was, this was good. And as far as just incredible storytelling, this movie like really hits it on the head. A lot of it revolves around a girl that he grew up with, that he uh, fell in love with, and basically tried to make choices along the path of when he goes back in time to try to make sure that she's all right. Again, without giving too much away, he kind of decides in the end that no matter what he does, it kind of, it's not good. So it's a very twisty movie, you know? Like there's a lot of things where you're like, okay, this seems good. Oh, 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 no. So yeah, um, I feel like a lot of people have seen this movie and uh, if you haven't, you know, maybe ask someone, uh, one of your friends, if you have any. <laughs> You don't have friends. If you do have friends, ask them about this movie. Uh, see what they feel about it because yeah, I, I really, really enjoy it and I think you would too. If you're cool and you have a big old brain, you might like this movie. Number four, The Invisible. Okay, so I have a lot of feelings about this movie. <laughs> Uh, and I'm gonna really, really try to keep them together because oh! So this is a movie from 2007 uh, and it stars the guy that no one likes because he played Goku in Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> we don't talk about that movie, but uh, The Invisible is another movie that critically he didn't do so well in. Uh, a lot of people didn't like this movie. But the really crazy thing about this movie is that no one has ever seen the movie the Invisible. No one. And if you're someone out there who's watching this and saying, oh, that's the Invisible, it's, it's pretty okay, it's a good movie. You're a f***ing liar and I don't want to hear it. So, The Invisible. It is a movie about uh, th this kid, I don't know his name, <laughs> who along his path of being a uh, pretty intelligent high school student gets involved with this unsavory character named Annie Newton who ends up basically killing him. And when I say basically, I mean it, because for all intents and purposes, he is actually dead. So a lot of the movie, and akin to its name, he is invisible to everyone else. No one knows that he's there, and he's kind of a ghost that is in between worlds of living and dying. He hasn't died yet, 
but he is sort of in the purgatory realm of just, you know, watching everyone going along their lives. In the beginning, you really hate the character of Annie Newton. Uh, the fact that she would basically kill this character when he's done nothing wrong. And just, just as sort of a gang member and just beats people up because you know, like, oh, hey, I'm tough, I've got, I've got daddy issues, you know, watch out for me. When, in actuality, when you go through the movie and the main character is kind of observing the world and observing uh, Annie's character progression, if you will, he almost relates to her. And Annie finds out more about the person that she presumes is dead and relates to him. I will spoil this really quick and say that there's no love interest in this movie. It's not like they fall in love. Oh, you killed me! Haha, <laughs> let's fall in love together! No, it's just they have a mutual appreciation and respect for each other at the end of the movie, which is really uh, nice to see. And it is just a really powerful movie, man. Like, it just gets you right in the feels every time. Another really great part about this movie is that it has a fantastic soundtrack. Uh, there is some Death Cab for Cutie Ben Gibbard in there. What I can say about the main character that no one, you know, liked in uh, Dragon Ball Evolution is he he delivers a really great performance in this. If you don't like him and you haven't seen this movie, like, maybe just give it a shot. There's a lot of really compelling characters in it. I really enjoy this movie. Number three, a goofy movie. Why is this on the list, Estri? Everyone loves a Goofy movie. Well, that's just it. I feel like every person that I've talked to that has seen the Goofy movie loves the Goofy movie, but no one has f***ing seen it. Rotten Tomatoes gave a Goofy movie a 44%. A 44, dog? That's no. Goofy movie was one of the first Disney movies I ever watched. Uh, again, like Hackers, it is a movie that is so 90s that if you watch it, you will know exactly what it was like to be in the 90s. It's about the character Goofy, who, uh, if you know anything about Disney, is kind of one of the less popular characters. Like, he's kind of a doofus. It's not like this all the time. Well, that doesn't sound like Goofy at all, dude. <laughs> But it's about Goofy, uh, and he has a son. Who had sex with Goofy? I don't know. Like, that's a, that's a mystery. And the fact that his child, there's nothing wrong with Max, like, at all. He's just a normal-ass little kid. He doesn't sound like this. He doesn't do what he But let me tickle your giblets real quick with just saying that this movie has one of the best soundtracks you'll ever f***ing hear in your life. Stand out and eye to eye. Holy shit. So the movie is about Goofy and his son as they're trekking across the country to go see a rock. Uh, yes, to go see a rock. They're, they're just going to go see a f***ing rock. Wow, look at this thing. This is real, real pretty rock right there. But no, they're going across the country to go see a rock show uh, from this dude named Powerline. And why that is interesting, if you're wondering, because you're probably like, that doesn't sound cool at all. Well, a lot of the kind of the goofs and gaffs is the adventure along the way. If you've ever seen planes, trains, and automobiles, if you've ever seen the vacation movies, if you've ever seen Due Date, if you've ever seen Airplane, the main parts of the movie really come out when they're actually going on the journey. Like, it's not that, it's not the destination, it's the journey kind of thing. So, a Goofy movie is that. In the beginning of the movie, Goofy and his son kind of have a rocky relationship. They don't really like each other. Goofy loves him. <laughs> but Max is like, oh, get away from me, Dad. Like, you don't know who Powerline is, you stupid ass f when I was a kid, you gotta, you gotta understand, okay? Like, when you're a kid, sometimes you have a crush <laughs> on some weird shit, okay? Like, if you've ever seen Space Jam, you know, I can't be the only one that, that thought about wrecking Lola Bunny. Or uh, Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. No, nah, that's still in it. Like, so, yeah, when I, was a, when I was a kid, I, for some reason, had a crush on Roxanne. I don't know why. Um, I feel like I'm in an intervention or an AA meeting as I'm trying to explain why I had crushes on animated characters when I was a kid. You know, I will have you know, though, this this didn't transcend into me as an adult. Uh, I, I don't like hentai, and I don't know why I'm talking about this. We're just gonna move on. All right, number two, Jumanji. So this is not the uh, newer Jumanji movies that have recently come out with Karen Gillan, uh, The Rock, Kevin Hart, and Jack Black. While I do love those movies, this is the original Jumanji with the amazing late great uh, Robin Williams. So this one's weird because I feel like a lot of people have actually seen Jumanji and definitely have an appreciation towards it. It seems like any time that I talk about Jumanji with someone, they're like, oh, hell yeah, bro, I love that. But weirdly enough, a lot of the world doesn't share the same enthusiasm for it. For example, I'm not that this is a really low score, but the whole of IMDb community gave it a seven. Metacritic gave it a 39 and Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 54 while giving the newer ones upwards of 70s to 80 ratings. And again, I'm going to say I love those movies. Definitely watch those as well if you like, you know, fun adventure movies. But the original Jumanji, oh my god. So if you haven't seen Jumanji, it is about a board game that uh, literally sucks a child 
<laughs> don't end the sentence right there, Destry. Like, keep, keep going. You don't want to just say a board game that sucks a child. <laughs> Sorry, a board game that sucks a child into the board game universe. Ah, that's 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 slightly better. Okay. And the entire movie is about trying to get him out of the board game and trying to stop the game so that everyone could go back to their normal lives. So you probably recall me talking about how much uh, I love the Chronicles of Riddick and how it was one of the only DVDs I had when I would come home to my very depressing 16 year old self's life. Well, rewind even more to when I was just a tiny little toddler and my life was somehow even worse. That's right, because when I was really, really little, uh, I was super poor and my mom was basically a single mother. She had to raise me by herself and we lived in a 10-man army tent near a river and we are practically homeless. That's a story for a different day, but my, my point that I'm trying to make here is that one of the only things that I remember from that era was just how much I loved watching Jumanji. Just imagine a 10-year-old me, I'm super poor, I've never seen a TV that's bigger than a 12-inch, I'm eating a probably three-day-old burrito, and I am enjoying Jumanji. Honestly, this movie got me through a lot of stuff, so that might be why it uh, it is so high on this list at number two. But I am not kidding what I say. I have seen this movie more than 30 times. Even now, I am blown away by something new every single time I watch it. I love, love, love that movie. Like, apart from the fact that Robin Williams is a goddamn genius and anything he touches, uh, apart from a few things, makes it immediately a masterpiece. The adventure aspect of Jumanji is truly what makes it one of the best movies. If you're a fan of Robin Williams, if you're a fan of adventure movies, if you're a fan of uh, plants with buttholes, watch this movie. <laughs> hey man, one person out there might be like, oh, oh, that is me. I love plants with buttholes. Okay, I'm gonna watch this now. And finally, number one on the list of underrated movies is The Page Master. Whatever you imagine. <laughs> oh, The Page Master, guys. Woo. We have made it to the very end of this list. And what better movie could we end with than The Page Master? What I feel is the most underrated movie of all time. This movie came out in 1994 and has the incredibly talented Macaulay Culkin when he looked like this and not like this. Yeah. And what was sort of a craze back in the early 90s, this movie also featured Macaulay Culkin as a cartoon character as well as his real life self, as a lot of the movie actually takes place in a fictional world inside of books. So what The Page Master is about is this little kid who is scared of literally everything. Ah, wind! Ah, bugs! Ah, herpes! Actually, herpes is terrifying. I, I'm with you there, buddy. But one day, when he's just acting like a scared little bitch, his dad makes him, probably a kid of like eight or nine, drive all the way his little bike into town to get some nails so that he could fix his treehouse or something. I think that's that's what the story is. As he's going to town, he gets stopped by these incredibly mean kids who who make fun of his outfit. Where are you going, the moon? <laughs> Where are you going, Richie? The moon. <laughs> And soon thereafter, it starts to rain, and he is forced to go inside of a library to warm off. To dry off, to dry off, to dry off. So what the f*** is to warm off? Sounds disgusting. So as he is inside the library, he is met with Doc Brown from Back to the Future, who is a creepy-ass librarian who keeps getting too close to him at every possible moment. And although Macaulay Culkin is trying to escape, he eventually gets sucked. That's you probably shouldn't end that sentence with Macaulay gets sucked. Sorry, sucked in to a beautiful world full of rich visuals and different stories in a animated setting. And if that's not enough to fucking get you to watch this movie, let me let me slap you in the titties with this. Patrick fucking Stewart, that's right, Jean-Luc Picard, plays a goddamn book that is a pirate. Oh, more? You want more? Cool, got you covered. Whoopi Goldberg as a fantasy book. What's that? You want Whoopi Goldberg to say sassy lines the entire movie? That, well, it has it. Dude, Leonard Nimoy, Spock, as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. What? Like, what asshole is rating this movie a six? A six on IMDb and a 21 on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm sorry, I, uh, told myself I wasn't gonna lose my cool. Let me calm down real quick. 
So after Macaulay meets his three awesome companions that help him along his journey, he must undergo rigorous tests to get to the exit in order to return back to his real human form. Among some of these tests, he has to go through Dr. Jekyll and uh, Mr. Hyde's laboratory and endure a scene more terrifying than f***ing anything I had ever witnessed as a child. My name is Mr. Hyde! <laughs> And then has to fight against a bunch of pirates and the likes of Long John Silver. And finally has to fight a massive dragon in a mythical land filled with fairies and a song more awesome than anything Shania Twain has ever made in her life. I would be lying if I said that I didn't give this movie a f***ing 9 out of 10 because it's that good. And yes, you can make the argument that, oh Destry, you're just seeing things through your veiled lens of frickin' nostalgia from the 90s or whatever the f*** may be. But, you know, that's why this is my own personal list of underrated movies. And while there are plenty of other ones I can talk about, I really do feel like The Page Master is easily number one on that list of just movies that, if you haven't seen, like, really do yourself a favor and actually watch it because it's f***ing great. That's it guys, thank you so much for watching my own personal list of favorite underrated movies. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel. Also, this is part one of a two-part series where I'm talking about underrated and overrated movies, so make sure you watch the overrated movies here in a couple of weeks when I post that. And also let me know in the comments down below any of your personal favorite underrated movies. Anyways though, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time, and fair wins, guys.